And if I don't know how to weep with those who weep, I have no business sitting with them or staying in that place. If I don't have the time of day to hear that story, then I need to move out quickly. So this woman was provoked. And you can read the story later, John 4. This Samaritan woman was provoked by the, by the Lord uh, who came. The Lord himself in human form was thirsty and tired. She was provoked by it. And, and he, he wasn't upset by her being provoked. He let, he let the argument, the discussion go on. And then he reveals a little bit more about himself and how, how her heart started to burn. He was the coal. He was the coal in the heat of the day. He was the coal in the heat of the day that, that just came to ignite her heart that came to set her free, that came to light her life on fire and show her her purpose and his grace and his beauty. I love this story. I love how Jesus stopped for her and saw her and honored her. I'm learning every day. I'm learning from him. I'm learning from my family who don't look like me. I'm learning. We're all learning together. And, and what I do, I just listen. Most of the time, I just listen. I used to talk a lot more. <laughs> I hear the Lord very often, zippy na boca. Listen. And I'll just sit with a mama or a sheha. I'll sit often at a well. And I'll listen. Tell me your story. Tell me your story. And every story is different. Every story is powerful. And every story matters. And as I sit and I listen, my heart is changed. And it's no longer just about what, what I, I've come with my family to bring, but it's about entering in to their suffering. And if I don't hear, that's why the Lord opened all those deaf ears, if I don't hear their story, then I'm still deaf. And somehow, the hearing of their story and the obedience of our little lives that would say, okay, will be a voice. It, it matters. And... I'm going to share one story. One. We were in a, we're not allowed to have churches. All our big, massive buildings, they don't, they're not fancy like this, but they're big like this. They're all, all closed, all of them, all of them. And there's no fighting where we are about that. It's just closed. But our church has never grown so fast. It's everywhere. People are worshiping everywhere. It's, 
It's beyond anything I've ever seen. It's blowing all our minds and our circuits everywhere we go. But we're not allowed to meet to worship, but we are allowed to meet to bring food and audio solar Bibles. And so there's thousands of people around, and thousands and thousands are just there. And, and we're doing what we do. And we're, it's not glamorous. It's hot. We're, we're hot. We're thirsty. We're tired. And, and we do it again and again and again and again and again. The thing I love about here is we've got some corporate worship because we're, we don't, it, it, anyway. Help me, Jesus. So, my brothers, first I, I spoke to the Sheha, and he told me how, uh, he, he told me how 13 of his kids were, were um, slaughtered and, he wasn't the right kind of sheha. And I shared the gospel with him. I went back and saw him again. He still dresses like a sheha, looks like a sheha. Um, he's got his New Testament in his pocket, and all he wanted was more audio solar Bibles because all he wants to do with all his people in all the places that he moves is, is worship and carry this glorious gospel. Now, when I looked at that man, uh, part of me was wondering uh, what's going to happen if I stop for him because of where we live and what's going on. And, and it's, a little, it's a little unnerving. And the Lord just spoke to me to stop for him, and we made friends. And, and now I've, I've seen him over and over again, and he is a lover of Jesus, a follower of Jesus, and, and it, God has comforted his broken heart, and love looks like something. That day, as I'm walking with my brothers, I can't, we got in the truck for a bit, we went, and there's another one of our pastors. This is, this is hot, thirsty time. One of our pastors is there. And, and I walked in. I mean, these guys would study four years. They had three months. They go back nine months. And then a fifth year. So these are people we know really, really well. And, and I'm sitting there with him and his little girl, who's not so little, and her little baby. She's probably 18, has a baby, nursing. His wife, he said he doesn't know where she is. When they burned everything, she ran. He ran. Half the kids went one way, half the, went the other way, and they came back, and there's, there's their four-and-a-half-year-old. He hasn't seen his wife since. There's four-and-a-half-year-old child beheaded. That's, that's my watch, my world right now. So if people... No, I'm just going to leave it at that. That's my watch, my world right now. And if I don't know how to weep with those who weep, I have no business sitting with them or staying in that place. If I don't have the time of day to hear that story, then I need to move out quickly. Jesus had the time of day. He wasn't tricking her. And he wanted her water. And they became friends. I held his daughter sobbing in my arms. The son, one son that was there, there it's too long to tell you. Another one of my brothers held Another one of my brothers that I walk with day by day, year by year, day by day, year by year. I've never seen them shine like they're shining now. They're the shiniest people I've ever seen on the planet. And I hope you argue with me. Another one's holding the other one and, and seriously 
God himself moved in that moment and those who could not weep began to weep. And those who were too horrified to, to, to tears to fall down them, their faces, fell down their faces, and God showed up at that moment, and then joy came in the midst. Do you understand who it is we serve and love? Do you understand sometimes he sets it up where today there will be no altar call? Because the altar call of today will be your life. Your life laid down is, I love altar calls. I'm all about it. I'm frustrated when 17, 16, 15 seconds come up. But it is a good and powerful thing. Because it's our life. That little woman was touched. That little Samaritan was touched. And the power of God touched her and the love of Jesus touched her and she left her water pot she left everything else she was doing and she ran back to her village and she shared the gospel